I honestly can't stop playing against the storm because it's so much fun, but I also wanted to make this introductory guide for new players on how to successfully increase settlers resolve and win every scenario on every biome that is map type. When it comes to increasing settlers resolve, you will learn about complex foods, filling their need for different kinds of leisure activities and luxury, giving them proper homes and coats, and how this affects their resolve while helping you win games. For all my other tips and helpful videos on this and other games, use the link up here and below in the description. Welcome to the Smoldering City. This is the place where my nation resides when it is attacked by the huge storm and I have reached level 8 here with a lot of deeds done and upgrades to my keep and other buildings and as I upgrade these and unlock these buildings start popping up and getting upgraded. But over here at the main map is where we actually play. I have already in this cycle created three little settlements and now I'm on to the fort. I can choose to play in the Scarlet Orchard or the Royal Woodlands. The Royal Woodlands is kind of the easy mode, while the Scarlet Orchard is a bit of a harder place to play. But for the sake of this let's play slash guide, I'm going to play right here in the Scarlet Orchard and show you the effect that this modifier, this extra modifier is going to have, the Flooded Mines. The region was heavily explored by other Viceroys. You're a Viceroy. Hostility doesn't grow each year. Hostility is what happens when you start destroying trees and the nature around becomes hostile to you and the spirits also. But you gain two more hostility points per villager. I will show you more about how this actually works once we start. The difficulty I'm using is Pioneer. This is like the medium difficulty. And in this place also I can cut wood faster and the fuel in the hearts will last me longer. I will talk about all of this as we play. As for the summary, you can see that I need to reach 14 reputation points to win here. And as an extra reward because of the flooded mines, I will get 10 machinery which helps me upgrade my citadel a little better. So the caravans that I can choose is either to start with the harpies and humans or with the beavers. The reason why it would be better for me to go with the beavers rather than the harpies and humans is because on this map, and we can see this in the modifiers, there is a lot of copper ore that can be mined and the beavers are much better miners than the other factions. This is why I'm going to start with them and I will be given some roots and eggs, which are the basic food, some parts to make buildings, the wildfire essences, which are needed for the extra hearts, some barrels, which are used in advanced crafting recipes, some amber, which is a trade good with which I can buy stuff from the merchants, some extra wood, coal and two newcomers. This means as soon as this caravan starts, I will get two new villagers, but I do not know of which race. So it will be interesting. Now, since I'm starting with the beavers and I know that they like to eat stuff that's made out of flour, I would need some roots because they can be grind into flour and so can be grain, which can be found on the map. So those are two components that I already know about that I will need to get these beavers their complex food. And complex foods are the first excellent way of increasing their resolve. I will also take some meat because meat is something that it will be useful to create jerky, which is something the other races like to eat. And I will also get some stones because making roads at the beginning will speed up my settlers. So that's it. I have used my four embark points to buy some extra roots, meat and stone. And we can start. Now to see the forest mysteries on this map. We've got untapped wealth. Gatherers have a 50% chance collecting additional resources when harvesting from resource nodes, but this is only active during the season called Drizzle. There are three seasons, Drizzle, Clearance and Storm. So this is effective during Drizzle. And also, after each storm, caravans find numerous scattered goods around their trade routes. During Drizzle, every completed trade route will give you five random packs of goods. This means you have to do a trade route, which is done through the traders, and then you gain five random packs of goods, which are very valuable. But this also has to be done during Drizzle. When the storm hits, and we can see that here, we have the looming darkness, which means we'll get minus four to global resolve multiplied by the hostility level from the forest. Then at level one hostility from the forest, we have under an open sky, the forest mystery, which means that the villagers will be soaked and have minus five to their resolve if they do not have housing. And we have here hunger storm. 
meaning every single meal in the harsh climate can be deadly. If villagers do not eat anything during a break, they will gain two stacks of hunger effects. This is very dangerous. And also faint flame, strong gusts of wind strike at the holy flame. Resources you sacrifice at the ancient heart burn 40% shorter, which is a big problem if you want one of their boosts. Now, another thing that we found here, additional effect, is the prestigious expedition. You need to earn 4 additional reputation points to win, and reputation rewards are distributed differently. Now, before I even start, there are a few things that I have to do. Over here in the consumption control, I have to turn off meat, because meat is very hard to find on this kind of a map, and therefore I need to disable them from eating it raw, so I can use it later for complex foods like jerky, and from jerky you can make skewers. The very next thing that I need to do is to go down here to camps and get the woodcutter's camp, but I will only place it where I see these small zones which are not dangerous to uncover. These are the glades which do not have these signs saying dangerous or even forbidden, because this is where trouble awaits. I want these glades which don't have these danger signs above them, and I can see that I have a mass of them, like 5, 6, something like that, over to the right, and a few over here to the left. So I want to expand my reach by cutting the forest in those places, and I will add my woodcutter's camps here, and over here, that's two. I am turning them towards the forest, because that is how the woodcutters are going to come out of here, cut here, come back here, bring the wood, and then only once this building is full, will they take it out and bring it over here to the main storage. I also want to cut only mark trees, because I do not wish to open glades that I do not want, and I do not wish to thin the forest where I do not wish to do so. I want to be specific on where I'm expanding, and I also need to cut the forest so I have room to build. As you can see, there is very little room to build here as we start. I also want to increase the priority for building these as high as I can, about 4 to both, because I want to add the paved roads, which will increase the villager speed by 15%, but that will only be built after these, as I want these to be operational and bringing in wood. As you can see here, I only have 12 of it, while I want to burn only wood at the ancient heart, which is the main place where they gather, and also if this goes down, the entire game is lost. So this must not turn off, but I also don't want to spend coal, which I also get at the start, because coal can be sometimes used in these dangerous and forbidden glades to do tasks that then later unlock rewards. So I want to save the coal, use the wood, but I only have a little bit of wood, which is why I need these up and running as soon as possible, and only later for the paved roads. Now this latest addition to the game, this update that was on the 27th of October, added the reinforced road, which gives you a 25% villager speed increase, but you require copper ore for it. This map is great because it often has copper ore, and also if I mouse over the trees, you can see that there is a 10% chance for each tree cut to get me some copper ore, so I will be able to use these roads in the settlement. And it's only now that I have done all the preparation that I can let the game run and I can even speed it up to its maximum speed of times 3. I'm just waiting for the woodcutters to be finished and then I will employ my beavers there. Oh, and one additional thing, I got lizards. And if you check over here, we can see that they both want to be sheltered, meaning to be in homes, and they all have their own types of homes if you want to go for the specialized one, which gives them more resolve, but this is unlocked later. As for foods, the beavers eat biscuits and pickled goods, while the lizards eat jerky and skewers. Remember, I mentioned jerky and skewers a moment ago. And they also eat pickled goods. And so you can see here that if I do create pickled goods, I will be satisfying the need for complex food for both of the races at the same time, increasing their resolve very easily. As for their other needs when it comes to education and luxury for beavers and brawling and religion for lizards, they don't really overlap, so that's going to be a little bit harder. As I said, these have been built and now we employ the beavers because they work best in these places because they have the specialization bonus for wood and that you can see over here as well. So they are going to get the 10% chance to produce twice as much, meaning out of thin air, they will produce double the amount 10% of the time, which is really great. Now we have all of them here working and you heard the sound. That means that I have advanced to hostility of the forest to level one. This is because I now have six woodcutters and 10 villagers 
and I have one heart, but that one actually provides me with a bonus when it comes to the hostility from the forest. But with the negative effect of 60 from 10 villagers and 72 negative effect from 6 woodcutters, I am already at hostility level 1. And remember, at hostility level 1, under an open sky starts to happen during the storm, which means if I don't want their resolve to go down, I have to build them housing. But no worries, we'll get to that. So now that I have my woodcutters and I have marked the cut only marked trees checkbox, I need to choose the trees to cut. Now I do not need to open up these glades and cut through them right now because I already have some resources here in my first glade and therefore I can just cut the space so I can have room to actually build stuff here. I want my production to be around the main storage while I want my homes down here at the ancient heart. Now at any point I can just pick up these woodcutters camps and move them for free to get them closer to the place that I'm cutting and then later reposition them to somewhere else. So I have employed six of my nine beavers as woodcutters. I have one population of the lizards which is here, giving the five resolve to this lizard and one resolve to everybody else. And that means I remain with three beavers as my builders, my free workers. They are going to be working on these roads and I want to expand these roads with the paved roads that I have, some stone remaining up here because this is where the roads are also going to be and over here to the sides where I'm going to extend later on once I cut these trees. As for choosing the new buildings, you could do this now and go through these buildings and choose your next ones, but I do not advise it because you want to wait to see what resources you will find and then pick the buildings corresponding to those resources instead of doing it in advance and not having a building to exploit some resource you find in these glades. Right now I can build the scavengers camp and start harvesting these roots and then I can build over here the harvesters camp to start harvesting reeds and I also have a chance for some roots and clay. This is something I want to do, but as soon as I start actually cutting down some wood and having some extra. So I will let the time roll and you can see the roads are getting completed while the woodcutters are working. And I can follow here when the wood is going to go up. It will go up once it is actually delivered from the camp. And you can see that they are waiting to get to 15 before they deliver it. And now this is going to jump. Now, before I do anything else, I have to pick a cornerstone. Cornerstone means something that my village is going to be specialized in. I could go with training grounds, spices or sharp sickles. Now each one of these gives me extra boost depending on what I choose. Just as with the buildings I don't wish yet to choose because look at this sharp sickles plus two to herb production. Neither do I have a building which can produce herbs right now because I haven't unlocked it nor have I found any herbs around here because I haven't unlocked new glades. So choosing this without knowing that I'm actually going to find a place where I can make herbs is not a good idea. Here for spices, herbs and roots production is increased by one for every 75 biscuits produced. Now beavers do like to eat biscuits, but I don't even know am I going to go into that production chain. I would rather go to pickle goods because lizards eat those too. So nope, I am not going to choose this either. Training grounds. The settlement specializes in training gear production. Gain one to lizard resolve for every 70 training gear produced. Now this isn't bad because they like to brawl and brawling requires swords. But again, this won't affect the beavers and so I might not want to go into that either. So none of these currently is what I want, but I do not have to hurry with the choice and I can also use a reroll. This is something I got after upgrading my smoldering city and this is not something you will have at the start of your own playthrough. But as I said, let's go back to the wood. We have 30 and that means we can make the first buildings for food production. The scavengers camp, which is going to scavenge us some roots here and that might also find us some herbs. So these herbs would get an increase of plus two because it says here from gathering, farming or production. But as I said, it is a questionable thing. Do I find places to grow them or am I even going to unlock the building necessary for that? Currently here at my first choice, I don't even have the building that could produce them. So I don't want to go into that yet. I'm just going to let the time roll, let them build this building. And I also want to start building shelters for them to have a place to live. So I will put one here, one here. But for nine plus one, that's 10 villagers. I'm going to need four of them. And since I've already cut some trees here, I can now cut some trees down here and leave myself more room to actually be able to place more of these. The scavengers camp was completed, so I can put two beavers to work there and they will be extracting roots. Now from here, the orders, I need to pick the first tree. 
The first choice is to get a scavenger scamp, which I already have, and a stonecutter scamp, which I don't have yet and might not even need. The second one is to get three packs of building materials, which you can always do with the default building. But what's more important to me is what are the rewards. Here we've got clay, reeds and parts, which are good for production of goods and this is good for buildings. While this is a reward that increases production. It increases production out of thin air. So if I have a building making two planks, with this upgrade, that building will be making three planks out of the same amount of raw resources. So this is among the best rewards you can pick and this is not hard to produce. So I'm gonna go with this one. So we have our three orders out of which we are gonna be able to fulfill all three. And now I'm going to let the time roll, get some more wood as my woodcutters work on these trees here and then be able to make more homes here, which are necessary for my folks to get this, as you can see, sheltered, plus one, maximum bonus plus three to, for the affected ones, and then they will get more resolve, which after it reaches this blue line here, I will start getting reputation points just from them being happy without actually having to go through these orders, which can sometimes save your game because it might be really hard to pull off one of the others that you get, especially the later ones, the harder ones. And therefore I want those homes to get me those resolve points. And you can see how fast the lizards are going to climb in the resolve, almost reaching that blue line. Now here we are in the clearance season. The rain has let up. We have cleaned this area up and I have the exclamation mark here saying no deposit because I haven't checked any new trees to be cut. I'm going to move these and same with this one, just on the opposite side. There we go, 100% finished, no more homeless. And now you can see that it is all climbing because they all have homes. Now he's going to finish the crude workstation and then we are going to start making with this beaver here, planks. And I am going to need about six planks. Planks is going to cost me eight wood because this building, the crude workstation, isn't very effective at building them. And you can see this by the red icon here. If you had stars, it would be far more efficient and use far less wood for every plank. Now, beyond the planks, another construction material that I'm going to need is fabric. And this is made from reeds, plant fiber, or leather. Now, the reeds I can get over here from this by using the harvester camp while the fiber I'm getting from trees, as you can see, there is a small percentage to get that. And I have already gotten five of them, which isn't enough for one production cycle as I need six. So I cannot do anything about that. And I'm going to just build the next building that I need, the makeshift post, which is the place where I'm actually going to be able to make packs of building materials. But for that to actually get built, I'm going to have to free up one of these workers. And of course they have cut down all the trees. So I need to extend what I'm cutting. Now during the storm, you can see that I'm having the global resolve reduced by four. And that is why now they're at 10. Now with this building done, I'm going to uncheck packs of crops, packs of provisions, and just leave the packs of building materials. You can see that I have to spend either 14 copper ore, six fabric, six bricks, or 10 planks, considering that I have a lot of wood while I do not have a lot of copper ore, I have only four. I am going to invest a lot of time in making these planks and then from them building packs of building materials, which then I will give through the order over here to get the reinforced saw blades. And now that the first year has passed, I'm going to receive some newcomers. I can choose between two humans and a lizard or three beavers. Since I already have a lot of beavers, I'm going to go with the human and the lizard. And this will also get me closer to my order to get six lizards. Now that I have some extra folks, I may have some more homeless, meaning I'm going to need to add another shelter. Another thing that I need to do is to finally pick a cornerstone because I now have another one coming up. Because I don't wish to use up my reroll, I'm going to go with the one thing that I'm pretty sure I'm going to use on this map and that is her production. Now I have the second one for the second year to pick the second cornerstone and I have exploration training, work safety guide and protected trade. Of these, well, this one requires brawling, which you get only later. This one requires education, which you also get much later. And this one means that the hostility is reduced whenever you sell goods worth 25 amber. This is actually great because I'm going to do a lot of trading. And I also want to reduce the hostility that's going to keep increasing with more villagers. So I'm going to pick that cornerstone. And that reminds me, I might as well get my trading post by now. Now that I have more population, I have more builders, so this will be done faster. And then I can employ this new population 
especially the beavers from here because this isn't a beaver specialized job somebody else can do it so i can put a human here and a beaver on his best workplace for him in here of course as i said this increases the hostility from the forest but uh, it's okay at level one nothing bad is happening during drizzle now once this trader has arrived some long-term planning comes into effect he offers me some goods some amber and then lots of raw and complex foods if i were to buy some complex foods i would increase the resolve of my settlers but only for a short time as they would quickly eat through them and then lose the resolve again i want to plan a lot more further ahead so looking at my villagers here i have the humans which like leisure leisure is drinking ale at a tavern or a monastery as for beavers they have the same thing and ale is made in a brewery which means if I were to go for the ale production here, I would get one more ale every time I produce any. So this would be great if I could buy this upgrade. And also since I am going to be producing ale, I want to be producing grain. So this perk is also great. And to even produce grain, you have to plant crops, which means that this perk would be awesome. So I have three perks which I could purchase here, none of which I have enough amber for. I have six and I would need 12 for the ale, 10 for the shovel, and 20 for the mold supply. So the question is, what do we sell? If I want to go with resin, I can, because I don't use it currently. The copper ore is really useful, so might not want to sell that. Planks I need for the building materials. I could go with the parts. Now, the parts are really dangerous to sell, because you need parts to make new buildings, production buildings, but you can also get new parts by doing orders and finding them around in other glades. So I let's say I do give three parts and 10 resin and I get as much amber as I can for that. That's going to be six, seven. If I can spice this offer up a little bit, let's say I give one plank. So now if I trade, I am going to have 13 amber. Now, since I cannot really trade for another 7 Ember, I'm going to have to satisfy myself with the bigger barrels perk. And that's about it. I don't really want to spend any more resources on this trader. Now, I need to let the game run and see how many planks do I have. I am at 9, so I could start making my first pack of building materials. And I will put my lizard on that. Here are new orders. Let's see what the queen wants me to send her. Packs of luxury goods or have the human resolve at 24. If I go with the 8 luxury, I will get one perk to flower production, or if I go over here, I will get one to coats production. Now, this is 50-50. If I go with the coats, which both the humans and the beavers want, I can increase their resolve by having good coats. If I go with the flower production, it's going to be easier to make biscuits and pie, which is something that's going to be satisfying the appetite of all three races, considering that it's easier to make eight packs of luxury goods than to gamble on human resolve for 24 for 30 seconds, especially early on, because you have nothing to push it towards 24. It's better to go with eight packs of luxury goods. So I'm going to go with that. If I take a look at these buildings once more, I have the tavern, which I will definitely need, especially because it uses both the ale, which gives leisure, and training gear, which gives brawling, and brawling is what the lizard likes to increase their resolve. So this is an excellent choice, and I'm gonna go with the tavern here. As for the next choice, there is the trapper's camp, and I have the exclamation mark here, meaning I will get this anyway once I do the order, so I shouldn't choose this. The ranch is not a bad choice it's actually a great choice on this map because it's going to produce meat but i really have to go with the herb garden as i have already chosen a perk to increase my herb production and as soon as i find some fertile ground this will help me greatly so i'm gonna go with the herb garden the third choice is between press cookhouse artisan and monastery now what i could use are the skewers and biscuits produced by the cookhouse the luxury goods produced by the press which produces oil but i'm not really big on oil although coats are really great for the beavers and humans to have some coats and also barrels which are necessary in order to produce ale so the artisan is actually a great choice because both barrels and coats is something that i need so i'm gonna go with the artisan and lastly, we have the Druid's Hut, the Smokehouse, the Scribe, and the Kiln. And here the choice is pretty simple. The Smokehouse, because of the jerky, which both the humans 
a door to it and the lizards do. So I have a lot of new buildings unlocked, but the building materials are pretty expensive because some of these require all three. And that is something that I'm not yet able to build because I really don't have a lot of plant fiber for a lot of fabric, nor do I have a lot of clay or stone for a lot of bricks. So I have to be very careful what I build. Considering the fact that I am now going to have all the building materials necessary for the first order, I no longer have to build these. He will continue building even though I have unchecked this. While I don't need as many planks as I used to, I currently have five and I can limit this to eight and then turn on fabric and brick production, put four and four on both. Now the first building, which would really help me increase the resolve here, and that is over here in the smokehouse. But as you can see, I need two of these, the fabrics, which are soon going to be produced. So I can already place this building. And as I said, I'm placing it close to my main storage because it will constantly need resources from it in order to produce and then bring them back here once it's done. With the finishing of that order, I have unlocked another building. The smelter is great because copper bars is something I can produce here. But at this point, the rain mill is my best choice because it can produce lots of flour and this is the material that I need to make all those biscuits and pie. So I'm gonna go with the rain mill. Now we are in the storm. In the second year, we have the rain mill, which we don't have the resources to make yet. I can already see the recipe. I don't want to be spending anything for on pottery or incense because I don't need those resources yet, because I don't need those goods yet, but I need to switch over here for meat and here for wood and also put a limit at about 35. Now a lot of things just happened, the third year started with Drizzle coming up, I also have unlocked some new stuff from the Queen, but I need to focus on the smokehouse. It has warmth, which means the lizards are gonna feel great there, but it's also meat specialized, meaning they want to work there as that is their specialization. So I want my lizard, and I have only two to work there. Since it is Drizzle, I don't really have to use the lizard here in the Ancient Heart, so I can take him out from there, put him here. But I need somebody there, so I can choose, for example, the beaver, because he's going to decrease the amount of wood that I burn here to actually keep the heart going. Now, with two lizards, I'm going to be at a limit of 35 jerky made out of meat and wood, and then be able to increase the resolve of both the lizards and humans, because they're going to be eating that. So that's okay, but I still need to open up these new glades to find more sources of food and more sources of work, because I have pretty much cleaned up this place of resources that were here when I started. So I'm going to move my woodcutter camps over here and cut the trees that are covering the entrances to these glades, and same over here. I'm going to switch them over here, facing here, and then cut these and stop them from cutting any other trees. So what did we find here? We found a copper vein, that means we need to build a mine to start making copper. And we also have a resource here, which is great to be used at fuel and speed up the work when you are working with dangerous glades and the events there, but that requires the stone cutters camp. And also we have some dewberry bushes, which require the herbalist camp, which I don't have. Over here, we finally have some more roots, which means that I just need to move the scavenger's camp over here to have this in range, and then they will start producing this resource. I should probably turn them over here and cut all the trees so I have extra access here. We need to put somebody to work here. We have mostly beavers, so we'll send them. Now, I could be building human houses. These would increase the resolve of the humans, but they also cost a lot of these resources that I don't have a lot of right now, which I need for some other buildings. So for now, I will keep making shelters, but later I can switch to specialized homes and increase my folks' resolve even higher, which is something that the jerky is going to start doing right now, because I already have, let's see how much of it, 45, which means these guys are now without a job. Now, I could go with this to be higher, let's say 45, and then remove two of them. So as soon as this goes below 45, one of them will start working on a new batch. Now with the resolve being at 14, 15 for the lizards, you can see that they are already up to the level. That means that they are so happy that they are actually passively increasing my reputation. But they have now dropped a little bit and we'll see soon why. What did we find here? A small abandoned cache and some swamp wheat fields. Wheat fields we would need a forager's camp for, which we don't have yet. While the small abandoned cache requires the simple tools to give me 
sent to the Citadel Queen's Great's reputation to increase my reputation and some of the amber for my pouch, or to get just the bundles of plant fiber and some baskets of eggs, which is the raw food that my beavers would be eating until I give them some biscuits and pickled goods. And especially because events looted is one of my orders, I should go with keep goods and I will just need to assign two villagers to actually bring those goods there. So I will send two lizards with six tools to keep 30 eggs and 25 plant fiber. They will go to that. Now we can see the effect of the under unopened sky because I don't have enough homes as I have allowed a lot of folks in, but I haven't made the extra homes. Now, considering the fact that I want to increase the resolve and at the same time have more room, I might as well go with the human houses. So this time around, I will build two human houses because I need four beavers to not be homeless. They will move into these shelters while the humans from the shelters will move into the human homes. And you can see this switching right over. And this will of course be gone now that it's drizzle again. And we have a new cornerstone to pick. Now I could go with this cornerstone and gain three barrels for every 10 planks produced. And I will use those barrels when I'm producing ale. But I already have a building which can produce barrels. So that's not really that necessary. I could go for exploring expedition, which would give me a constant minus five to global resolve, but a plus 15 for five minutes every time a new glade is discovered. That would increase the resolve a lot, but it's risky because I need to keep opening glades every five minutes. And then we have the work safety guide, which would increase their production if they're educated, but that is something that happens at the end of it. So because I don't really want to go into any of these, I'm going to use my chance to reroll. Now I just got exploration training, which means if they have brawling, they will be able to bring in more goods from events, protected trade, which I already have, which could be great if I can now pick this and I can double up on it every time I sell goods worth 25 ember. And you can see I haven't yet gained one of these effects because I have only sold 16.3 out of the 25 necessary. So the next time the trader arrives, I will sell more and then I'll be able to reduce the hostility that is creeping up because of me opening regular glades and having more villagers. And since I have so many fabrics, I might as well start making some coats. And for that, I will need the artisan and I will put it right here behind the stockpile and that should be built fast as I have lots of folks. I also need to get more homes for them. I can have another human house because I have two of them and there are six humans so this will be enough room for another one and then they will leave room for more of these guys. And over here, since we've done the lizards for 30 seconds, we have the trapper's camp now and increased to leather production with lots of baskets of insects. And what's great about insects is that I can now make more jerky out of them. So I can increase this further to 55 since I have now more humans to feed and more lizards to feed and put one more lizard to work here. The artisan is now done. I don't have anybody specialized in clothing production, so I'll just put three humans here. I will not be doing any barrels or pigments for the moment. And I will put this to like 45. So they will take only two fabrics to craft 10 coats each production cycle. Now, if you go over here, you can see that the human housing has increased the resolve of these humans. I have six humans, two homes, each home having two humans in it. So their resolve is now upgraded. But the beavers are my main issue right now because I haven't upgraded them with anything else. But with the humans finally finishing the first number of coats, the beavers are now going to have coats and this will finally increase the resolve. As you see, they, it just got boosted. Now I can choose another building. I could go with the Explorer's Lodge. That would give me brawling and education. Brawling I already have. Temple is religion and education. Religion is something the lizards like as well as brawling and the beavers like leisure and education while the humans like religion and leisure. Now the clan house gives religion and brawling considering the fact that I have already unlocked the tavern and the tavern gives brawling and leisure. I could use the temple. So I'm going to pick that one. Although I could go with the herbalist camp and finally start collecting the resources that I saw. So right now, considering that I need more food from the berries and mushrooms, I'm going to go with the herbalist camp and get more food from here. And I also had another spot here 
which I could use the herbalist camp on and get more food. Because as I said that I don't have a complex food for the beavers yet, that is the better choice. And now that the herbalist camp is finished, the specialization bonus is alchemy. And that is something the harpies are good at, which is not something that neither of these are good. So just put two humans here to get some of these berries. You can see that the humans are, have now such high resolve that they are at their limit where they start giving me reputation. You can see plus 0 0.10 reputation per minute, which means that my reputation is now passively increasing from the resolve of humans who are now happy at their full resolve. This is due to a number of elements, which now when we go into the storm season is going to be reduced because of the looming darkness. We also have this, but considering the fact that nobody can be affected as they all have homes, I don't really have to care about it. So the only negative is the storm with the global resolve debuff, the looming darkness because of its minus four to global resolve and the worst part of it, it's stacked twice. What I could try to do is to reduce the hostility. First of all, I could get rid of all of my woodcutters. This will drive it down to 14, but this is still at level one. If I want to reduce it further, I can go over here and sacrifice wood. Now that I'm sacrificing wood, I have reduced the hostility down to zero and there is no longer the multiplier here. So I only have the minus four from global resolve once instead of twice, which I had because I had hostility at level one. Considering the fact that the storm doesn't last very long, about a minute or two, you can live through it with this increased and it won't cost you that much just to get over the storm with the hostility at zero while not losing the resolve. Here's the new mine and we'll employ our beavers again to work here. We can actually upgrade the mine. As you can see, there are the pit ponies, the mine carts or the box script. Now this is level one and the second level you can choose similar upgrades. So I could go with the ponies now, considering it's drizzle and next is clearance, so I won't have any issues with the resolve yet, I should finally open up a more dangerous glade because I can simply not find any land that's fertile in these small glades that I had around me. Now, let's see what we have found here. We have some fallen beaver traders, and if this glade is not cleaned up, the decay will spawn two pieces of living matter. This is really problematic, although even working here will decrease my beaver resolve by 8. Now I'm going to send two humans and I'm gonna go with keep goods because the ways of the forest, this book, the perk, is going to reduce the hostility by 50 points while I will also gain a basket of insects and box of pottery. So I'm going to investigate and this, as you can see, just decreased my beaver resolve. Luckily for me, I have clothing, I have homes, but that is about it, so that is really problematic. I could really go for a tavern at this point, because I do have some ale that is stockpiled from one of the orders that I fulfilled before. There it is, ale 15. So that will help just to make sure that they don't drop below this uh, while this is being worked on. So this will be worked on for about two minutes. What I can do is because I have sea marrow, I can go here to the ancient heart and use sea marrow to burn it and this will reduce the amount of time that this takes to be finished. So not only will I be speeding this up using the meadow and reducing the time that that negative effect is going to be influencing my weavers, but also by building the tavern and using some ale to give them leisure, they will be able to get a higher resolve. And on the plus side, if I have three folks working here, I'm going to have the Clement's Tail perk which is going to have a three global resolve effect on everybody. So now that I have here a beaver, a lizard and a human working, I have plus three with the gleam and resolve. So we have that going for us. And we also have the ale, which is going to increase the leisure services for the beavers and the humans with the resolve even further. And considering the fact that I already have a tavern and tavern has training gear need to give the service for brawling to my Lizards, I might as well start making some training gear, which I can make here at the weavers by using some stone and some planks and I will limit that to 25. Now let's see what building I can unlock because I have no fertile ground, nor do I have the ability to produce grain as I haven't yet unlocked the farm for grain. So because of this, I might as well just go with 
the forger's camp, unlock that, and then be able to pick up those resources that I have unlocked on several occasions and found them across the map and then finally get some grain. Brewery, finally I can produce ale and I can also do pickle goods in the brewery. So brewery is the building that I'm gonna go for. I just need actually two fabrics and I need that produced. So I'll put somebody here to work on that. Here's the brewery. Let's turn these off for now. So we want ale. That means the grain we have stockpiled and we have to use the pottery or the barrels for it to actually be produced. We'll put that at 55 limit and put two humans because they're good at brewing because of their specialization. Now for pickle goods, we need to use berries, roots, mushrooms or vegetables along with the barrels and pottery and we'll put that limit at around 35. That means that I have to start producing either pottery or barrels. I can produce pottery at the smokehouse at star 1 or I can produce barrels at the artesian at 2 stars. I would need either copper bars or crystallized U for that or over here for pottery I would need clay and wood or coal or oil or sea metal. Now it would be better to do it at the artesian but considering the fact that I don't have the required resource that being the copper bars and the crystallized U for the barrels that is why I'm gonna go with the pottery here. So I will put one more worker here, put the limit at around 35 and then allow them to be making this pottery until I can make barrels. Now as my humans make both pickle goods and ale, we can see over here that we are going to finally be able to satisfy some of the complex needs of both the beavers and additionally lizards because they both want to eat pickle goods and we are only missing the biscuits and the pie that these guys like to eat also the humans like the biscuits but the problem with that is that i have still not been able to get the bakery i mean i had it rolled a long time ago but now i need it and to also get to that bakery i need to fill up some of these orders or get the passive increase of these guys who have above average happiness to increase my reputation up to the point where you can see this little new blueprint reward saying that I can pick a new building hopefully that's going to be the bakery and then with the bakery I can upgrade them to their maximum resolve that also means I have to pick up a lot of grain and not use it on any other recipes but then again grain is used also for beer but that's okay because I do have a lot of it and you can build a lot of beer especially when you have this perk that I've chosen twice so I'm getting 20% more ale produced every time one batch is produced and you can see here now that the pickle goods are being consumed there is a plus three for the beavers plus two for the lizards and you can see the increase happening here with the resolve this is going to keep increasing and these new batches of pickle goods and ale are delivered and you can see the leisure now being filled as well over here at the tavern with the access to ale the leisure service is being delivered to them and you can see it's starting to multiply and also their resolve going up the lizards seem to be going down a little bit that's probably due to the fact that i'm running low on jerky and i'm running low on jerky because i didn't have access to some meat for a while but now with the new insects that i got from one of these caches here i am now finally able to make these again so all in all as you can see the important thing is to keep getting new blueprints which you can combine with your current production chains and then making sure that during storm season you reduce the hostility of the forest down so that it doesn't drag your global resolve down and with that passive upgrade when all of them are happy you can see just how much happier they just got with the addition of jerky for example and both the humans and the lizards just got an upgrade while the beavers are now unhappy because they ran out of clothing so it's a balance that you have to keep making sure to fulfill every season and depending on what the map you're playing on you will have different challenges just like i have here with there simply not being any farmable land on any of these glades that i have unlocked i might score with a glade that actually has farmable land soon and that will pretty much be a landslide for me to win in the scenario but i think you have kind of gotten the point about how to increase resolve and i would like to thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more